Now I'm going to talk about Freemasonic symbology. And I, I want people to understand that Freemasonry in and of itself is not an evil ideology. Again, it is an occult system of knowledge that can be used for good or it can be used for ill or manipulation depending on who is wielding that knowledge. So this is the Freemasonic compasses and square with the letter G in the middle as depicted in American Freemasonry. The compasses represent higher consciousness and they represent morality, proper moral action. The square represents base consciousness, which must be ruled by our compassion and must be ruled by our moral uprightness. The square is base consciousness. It can be seen as the reptile brain. If you look at these three um, components as the three complexes of the brain, okay, you have the R complex being the square. You have the neocortex with its two hemispheres being the compasses, and you have the midbrain, that which gives birth to the conscience, care, as the G in the middle of the two. It represents the goddess, the grand architect of the universe, which is care. Okay, that's what creates our experience, what we care about. And if we get into touch with conscience, it can give birth to proper moral action. But we can only do that by getting in touch with the grand architect of the universe, the God principle, the, the sacred within us. And uh, that is how to get off of the square and onto the compass. See, the square traces a shape that is a square with 90 degree angles, not found in nature, rough edges. The, the circle traces the symbol of perfection in ancient uh, systems of occult knowledge. The circle is perfect, it is unbroken. It is a symbol of divinity. It can never be nailed down with perfection because it is based upon pi, a, a, a figure that uh, is a divine principle that can never be calculated with absolute certainty. So the object is to circle the square and have our compassion and our higher consciousness rule over our lower instincts and our animal instincts. And we do that through getting in touch with the care principle, the, the generative principle, the G, which is the grand architect of the universe, care, conscience. So it's about moral uprightness, and it can be equally seen by dark builders, by dark masons, to represent quite an opposite. This is what, how symbolism is in the eye of the beholder, and how the wielder of this symbol determines what it's really being used for based on their level of consciousness. So a dark mason, a rogue mason, a dark builder, so to speak, could see the symbol this way. Man is ignorant. He exists in base consciousness. And I, as one who has perfected myself, have the divine right to rule over the base man, the square, the he who is on the square. So uh, it's two different interpretations of the same symbol. One seen in a positive connotation and one seen in a manipulative negative connotation, depending on uh, the eye of the beholder of the wielder of the symbol. Here's how this has been used in, in popular culture. Uh, uh, in some of these examples, it's subversive. In some, it could be seen as uh, an uplifting symbol. But, uh, Generally, in education, you'll see the square used in the three symbols and the color blue for the square representing the blue lodges. And this is base consciousness. This is the base of the pyramid of this particular uh, secret society network, the hierarchical pyramid-like structure. And you're seeing the pyramid encoded here, but through the square. And the three base levels of Freemasonry, the entered apprentice, the fellow craft, and the Master Mason being the three introductory or initiatory degrees of what is known as the Blue Lodge in American Freemasonry. And uh, this is as far as many go. 
uh, and it is all, often the degrees that are said to uh, 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 keep knowledge of higher levels suppressed for those who, those in the, really in the know of the order, do not wish for those people to receive the knowledge because they have been gauged as really still being in base consciousness. And you're seeing that depicted in educational logos there, uh, this Columbia University and that the uh, University of Pennsylvania's uh, shield. Here we see the compasses tracing the semicircle on the patch for the Columbia Space Shuttle mission. And one of my favorites in encoding the compass and square of Freemasonry is the game of baseball, a game I've personally resonated with. But we see the compasses encoded by the uh, foul lines here, okay, that make up first and third base. The bases form the square for the individuals in base consciousness, on the square, the base men, okay, they're the base men. And the middle here, the mound of creation, the primordial mound, is the limbic brain, the generative principle, the feminine aspect that throws the feminine seed into play. The intuitive principle of the limbic brain giving information to us and it is up to us here at the, at, at the, uh, the place where the feminine instinct is being given to make contact with it with the male principle. Or in other words, to put it into action with the phallic symbol. You're uniting the male, the bat, and the female, the, the ball, and putting the, the feminine aspect of truth into play in the field of consciousness to get it past the base men and to make the journey from base consciousness to higher consciousness to get home. The game of baseball is completely Masonically designed. I don't see that as a negative influence. I'm just pointing out an, an example of how that symbology is used uh, in the game of baseball. I personally look at that as po a positive understanding. The picture being the feminine aspect, care, the grand architect of the game. So in, in these examples, I do see it as subversive. In this one, of course, the compass is used here uh, on, this, uh, on this logo from NASA, but uh, we know what happened with that mission. So uh, could be uh, an uh, illusion that uh, dark Masonic elements may have been in control of that particular sacrifice. Who knows? The game of baseball, clearly Masonically designed, I look at that as a positive connotation of the symbolism. In a very negative connotation of the symbolism, uh, we see how the Freemasonic network is used all throughout uh, the, the United States in control agencies, in agencies of male dominator control, in this example being police. And there, uh, these, these examples are certainly Blue Lodge degrees, Blue Lodge orders, uh, lower orders of masonry, and uh, I would look at the individuals belonging to these groups and other fraternal orders of police as being on the square. And uh, if anybody uh, thinks that when someone tells you in Freemasonic parlance that you're on the square, that they're paying you a compliment, you have no idea what the term means because you've just been insulted by uh, being told that you're on the square. You're being, it's not a symbol of being um, a fair, a fairness and uprightness. It is a, the square in Freemasonry is most certainly a symbol of base consciousness, of not understanding the true self. And when someone is told that they're on the square in Freemasonry, it is essentially an insult. And uh, we see that this uh, network of secret societies is actually at work in these controlling orders of police. And I look at that as a very subversive symbol because these, these fraternal orders 
have more allegiance to the secret oaths that they've sworn than to actually do the job to uphold the Constitution and to protect the public. And it can be really used as a means of one hand washes the other, the other. I'll do a favor for you if you look the other way in this instance, or you know, do what I tell you to do here. And it, it's really a way that freedom can be subverted through this hierarchical order, particularly when it is used in conjunction with controlling bodies like the police. So this is uh, an ex extremely important symbol that's going to carry over into what we talk about next. This is the first degree Masonic tracing board, and I'm going to cover this from two angles, a positive connotation and a negative connotation. So <clears throat> here we see first there are directions. This is a map. You see north, south, east, and west. So we are standing at the west looking east. The west is down here, the east is up here. We see that there is a checkered floor of black and white squares representing base consciousness. This is the checkered life of a man who is not born in consciousness. He does not know light from dark. He is a wanderer, a pawn in the game, so to speak. One who can be positioned. However, his master may wish him position, the chess master of the game, who sees the whole board from above, from a higher level of consciousness, and takes the pieces and positions them as he will. Uh, th this is one who is in duality. Here's the pillars, the, the dual pillars. One is, this is the pillar of Jaquin. It is a masculine pillar, uh, uh, represented as a Doric column. And you have the sun ruling that pillar. It's the pillar of strength, the S uh, representing strength. The feminine side of the pillar is the pillar of Boaz. The B at the bottom stands for beauty. It is a Corinthian pillar, a ladder or an eight feminine pillar. And the moon sits above that pillar. This is the pillars that represent the male, uh, the masculine and feminine aspects of human consciousness. And it is how we enter the world with these two principles kind of in opposition, and it's our goal to understand them and to unite them as one. To, to use our willpower, this is the pillar of will or wisdom, which the W stands for, it is Jacob's ladder. Jacob, as described in the story of Genesis, goes to a higher level of consciousness. He experiences God consciousness. He comes back down to the earth and understands that really the, the journey of life is to get back to that level of pure awareness and pure consciousness. And uh, that is the end of the journey, kind of, you know. It's like you enter in this dual state, seeing things as separate, and then the object is, is to make it through the realm of duality, the checkerboard floor, and unite the two principles as one, and then you're born into the stars, into the light of con conscience and consciousness. So that's the journey up Jacob's ladder. And uh, we see here in the background the, the stones known as the ashlars, the rough ashlar representing the soul in need of work, and the perfect ashlar representing the state of perfection to which, to which we seek to attain. Now, uh, the, the initiates are going up the ladder in the three basic degrees of masonry. Uh, entered apprentice, who is still on the floor. The fellow craft, who is in the middle, who has not received the key, which is tied here to the ladder, but he's at the G, where conscience is beginning to be born, the care principle. And uh, the master mason, who gets the key to unlock the star gate, the sun, so to speak is bringing himself to a place of balance and understanding and enlightenment. So it's a powerful and positive connotation. It could also be used to represent the left brain and the right brain, the male and female yang and yin energies, and the object is to unify them in the middle to awaken the prefrontal cortex and the pineal gland to awaken our star gate. Okay? And that's in the direction of the east. The, the, the direction of the light, the rising sun, is in the east, 
We don't want to be headed west. That's the direction of base consciousness and darkness. The setting sun, the sun sets in the west, of course. So powerful symbology there, but it unravels even more when we consider this tracing board on its on its side, as I will show you. Again, here we're seeing the three lights in the heavens, the lights of Freemasonry, the lights of the religions, the sun, the moon, and the all-seeing eye, the stars and planets. Again, we see, we saw the religions of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism representative of these principles, and how they correlate to the three pillars of Freemasonry and global consciousness. Now, looking at the Freemasonic tracing board on its side opens up a whole nother level of what this symbolically represents. So again, we're given directions. Here is the west, here is the east, this is the south, and this is the north. Understanding what we now understand about astrotheology, we can now understand what this whole scene really depicts. It depicts the spiritual journey of man out of the prison vibration that is on the earth. Identification with the physical worldly world of matter. This is the earth. It's black and white. The colors of a prisoner. Okay, The prison planet, so to speak. And it's these are the lines of latitude and longitude of the earth. This is the Earth's equator, right here, the middle pillar. This is the, the Tropic of Cancer. This is the Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere, the Tropic of Cancer in the Northern Hemisphere. Here we see the light of Freemasonry, the sun in the east, all away from the Earth, and this is the sun at the summer solstice. This is the sun at the winter solstice, when the northern hemisphere is in darkness, depicted as the moon there. We're not in enlightenment, right? This is the the the, the pillar that the pillar of mercy, because when the sun is up there, the sun favors the northern hemisphere, shows mercy upon the northern hemisphere. Boaz is considered the pillar of severity because the sun does not favor the northern hemisphere when it is at the pillar of Boaz or the Tropic of Capricorn. And this is the equator. This would be balance or the equinoxes, the all-seeing eyes, the place that opens up when the hemispheres of the brain come into a perfect state of balance. So this is the journey of the initiate. From darkness, starting here on the earth in darkness, and then proceeding in a stepwise fashion to a place of balance, okay? This is emotion. This, this is the sacred feminine principle of emotion. You have to care enough to begin the journey. You go higher. You're trying to reach a place of balance between these energies, and then you can get that key right there to unlock the star gate. To unlock, and that's accomplished through action. The male principle of putting your emotions and your thoughts into action. And that is how you get off of the base consciousness and to the stars. Powerful iconography, powerful symbology being used here if you know how to read it. Now, in a negative connotation, a dark builder, a dark mason, may want to look at this symbol in a perverted way. So here's a reversal of it. You see, yes, this is base consciousness and this is higher consciousness, but they'll look at this symbol and say, well, the latter is tilted across toward the left, toward the sun only, and away from the feminine pillar, away from the moon. And it, what it, our task is, is to imbalance consciousness toward the male principle only, or the left brain only, because that's what gives birth to a dominator, to one who is bent upon control, a sorcerer of sorts. So this is how a dark occultist would interpret this symbol. I'm God. My will be 
done. I will use my influence to take those in base consciousness and give them the dark light. Make them think that they're being initiated into something important. But what I'm really doing is imbalancing consciousness to the left brain. And that is what some people are doing with certain individuals who enter Blue Lodge degrees in rogue lodges of Freemasonry. And they're, being, they're using that knowledge to create more mind control dominators that will listen to them, follow their orders, and they're not really receiving the true light. They're receiving the dark light of male left brain imbalance. That is one way that, that dark manipulators will see a very powerful positive connotative symbol and pervert it and turn it, in, turn it into something completely negative. And here is how that process is used. We see this extremely subversively when it comes to the iconography that is used on police uniforms. Particularly, here's the floor of the house representing base consciousness, the pawn, the checkered man, who cannot understand the difference between light and dark. He doesn't really understand what makes the principles of right and wrong function the way that they do. Conscience isn't born in an individual that simply follows orders. Anyone of true conscience would always ask the question why before carrying out any action or order given to them by anyone. And we see this, if we look at this symbol of the fraternal order of police having a Masonic third degree handshake and the all-seeing eye of, of uh, Freemasonry there and the three other um, uh, 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 corners of the uh, pentagram uh, representing the three, lo the three uh, blue lodge degrees. We also see here the three pillars and now they're in their proper orientation with the checkerboard floor in between them, with the dual pillars being here and the one pillar being unified at the top. And in that orientation, we see that it forms an inverted pentagram as opposed to a right side up one. Just as it is here in the Victoria Police's logo, clearly an inverted five pointed star, and it is placed along with the checkered floor right around the Temple of Solomon and then directly on top of the prefrontal neocortex, the third eye. The inverted pentagram, which we already talked about as an extremely subversive symbol representing the destruction of spirit and the burial of spirit into the ground beneath the material world. Uh, and here we see the double square, another symbol of base consciousness representing the hypercube, which I'll get into, on the third eye on a uh, English police's uh, uh, headdress. So, and there again, the checkerboard floor of the house wrapped around the Temple of Solomon, the temple, the sun and the moon, the left and the right brain. And that's what the symbol actually represents. The, the, the Masonic tracing board represents in Freemasonry the Temple of Solomon, the temple within man. It is a representation of the brain, the temple within man, the temple of Solomon, the brain complex. So that is how it is used. And here is a 33rd degree Freemason who I do not uh, consider to be a, uh, a negative or evil person. I think he understood a lot about what Freemasonry was and how it was used and what its true purpose is. But he did um, talk about some of how the negative aspects of Freemasonry are used. This is Manly P. Hall. He said that Masonry conceals its secrets from all except the adepts and sages of the elect and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols to mislead those who deserve to be misled to conceal the truth which it calls light from them and to draw it away from them. He's saying that those who are really not in the know that often would pervert the ideas and the knowledge are deliberately misled away from this knowledge so as not to let it fall into the wrong hands. I 
often think that, as well, in Freemasonry, it is being done deliberately to try to create people who, those who really are in the knowledge of how consciousness works, can manipulate for their own gain and get them to do what they want. Because they're dangling a carrot, so to speak, before them and saying, I have the higher level knowledge if you'll do what I tell you and uh, you know, I'll, then I'll let you have it. When in fact they're just being led like, like, you know, like I said, like, like uh, a donkey with a carrot at the end of, of, the, uh, of the stick. Manly P. Hall said that the blue degrees are but the outer court of the portico of the temple, the porch of the temple of Solomon, hence the term porch masons. Part of the symbols are displayed to the initiate, but he is intentionally misled by false interpretations. It is not intended that he shall understand them, but it is intended that he shall imagine that he understands them. Their true explication is reserved for the adepts, the princes of masonry. One of the highest level Freemasons in, uh, in Masonic tradition, telling you right out in the open what the Blue Lodge degrees are for. And of course, the fraternal order of police is Blue Lodge degrees of masonry. So that's Masonic um, symbology and, and some, some, some uh, variants of how it is used. The next, I'm going to talk about talismanic um, symbology and how it is used on our money. So this will be a very big part of, of this part of the lecture.